In today's video, we are going to discuss Psalm chapter 7. The main point of this passage is found in verse 11. The Lord is a righteous judge. We see this theme wedded and woven throughout this entire psalm. The Lord is the righteous judge. The context of this psalm is again distress and trouble. This is the same theme that we've seen in Psalm 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and now 7, which illustrates an important point that in our trouble and in our distress, we should call out to the Lord. In particular, the distress of this passage comes from a conflict David has having with Cush, a Benjaminite. This man is, uh, is uh, judging David so that he, like a lion, wants to tear David's soul apart. He wants to rip it into pieces so that nobody's to deliver because he has an accusation against David. He is saying that he has repaid his friend with evil and plundered his, his enemies without cause. So this is the accusation that's leading Cush to want to destroy David. So this obviously is bringing quite a bit of distress into David's life. And amid this trouble, David cries out to the Lord. He asks the Lord to save him. That's the first thing in verse words, save me from my pursuers and deliver me. The pursuer here in mind is namely Cush, but we've seen that there are many pursuers against David. So his first request is save me from Cush, his judgment and his accusation. He next requests to the Lord that uh, if I have done this evil, what evil is he referring to? Again, repaying his friends with evil and plundering his enemy without cause. If he's if, if David has done this, then let Cush destroy me. Let him trample my life to the ground and lay my glory in the dust. So David is ready to submit to Cush's judgment if it's right. So first he calls out to the Lord, save me. And then if I have done this, then let me be judged. And the next stanza, he calls the Lord to judge. So Cush has made his judgment. Uh, David is requesting now that the Lord would would uh, stand in judgment. And then in uh, verses 8 through 11, we learn about the Lord and his judgment. David is, is asking that the Lord would judge David according to David's righteousness and according to his integrity. He's asking that the evil of the wicked would come to an end, namely he has in mind these false accusations of Cush. And he asked that the Lord would establish the righteous. And he's calling the Lord the righteous God. David comes back to this idea of taking refuge. David takes refuge in the Lord. And his shield is none other than God. He reflects on the reality that God is a righteous judge. So, so far... What we've seen is that Cush has brought an accusation against David and made a judgment against him, but David calls out to the Lord to stand in judgment and to judge him according to David's righteousness. So don't judge me according to Cush's accusations. Rather, judge me according to my righteousness and according to my integrity, for you are a righteous judge. He then reflects on the reality of the unrepentant, that God wets his sword against the unrepented so that the wicked man who conceives evil, he leads himself to his own destruction. He digs a pit and he falls into it. His mischief returns on his own head. So this reality that God is a just judge, he arises in judgment and judges us rightly according to righteousness and according to justice. And the fact that he judges the wicked accordingly leads David to give thanks to the Lord and to praise him. So again, the main idea is the Lord is the righteous judge. So with that in mind, let's think about a few discussion questions. First, when we look at verses 1 all the way down, really, um, actually the entire psalm, we see that Cush makes judgments about David, as does the Lord. We see that the Lord's judgment, though, is 
a righteous judgment, and Cush's judgment is not. So spend a few moments discussing and explaining why David is comforted by the fact that ultimately God is his judge and not Cush. So again, why is David comforted by the fact that the Lord is his judge and not Cush? Let's also discuss the nature of our God. Notice he is both our judge. It says in verse 8, the Lord judges the people, but he's also our refuge. So let's discuss in our small groups the nature of that the fact that our God is both our judge and the one who protects us from harm. This is an amazing reality um, that I want us to discuss in our groups. Also, notice verses 12 through 13. These verses describe a horrific, really a terrifying reality that if a man does not repent, God's sword is against him. He brings his sword ready to destroy the wicked. The Lord prepares for the unrepentant deadly weapons and making his arrows fiery shafts. This is a terrifying reality. So let's discuss uh, this reality and let's, let's, let's ask the question, how do these verses transform our approach to the unrepentant. Certainly we have we know people in our lives who have not repented from their sins. People who don't claim to be Christians and also some Christians who refuse to repent from their sins. How do these verses transform our approach to the unrepentant? Notice in verse 17, this verse describes the person who does take refuge in the Lord. And this is this is David. Because David takes refuge in God's judgment, he will give him thanks and he will give him praise. So how often do you sing about God's righteousness to save you? We often think of God's salvation in terms of his mercy, and that's true. But God's righteousness also leads to salvation. So how often do you give thanks to God for his righteousness? How often do you sing praises to the Lord for his righteousness? So that would be a good discussion point as well. Again, church family, in Psalm 7, the main idea is that the Lord is the righteous judge. We see that the context is the time of distress and trouble where Cush is passing judgments upon David, but David calls out to the Lord to judge because the Lord is the righteous judge. I hope you enjoy uh, discussing this psalm together in your small groups.